hearing. We're going to start uh, as a subcommittee until we get members here so we can establish quorum. Uh, good afternoon, Madam, Madam Vice Chair. Um, I'd like to, uh, we'll be dispensing with three bills today, all of which are part of the second extraordinary session. We also have one bill that is still on file that will go directly to the floor under 28.8. That measure is AB X27 by Assemblymember Stone. Uh, although our agenda is short, I'd like to just reiterate the message to the audience and members providing testimony this afternoon that we want to limit our testimony to the fiscal aspects of the bill. Uh, please refrain from lengthy policy discussions. And if the sergeants can uh, continue calling member absent committee members, we uh, do have Assemblymember Thurman here. Mr. Thurman, please come forward. Members, this is ABX29 by Assemblymember Thurman. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, as stated, I'm here to present AB2X9. Uh, this bill would ensure that all of our campuses, uh, public schools statewide, are tobacco free, including from e cigarettes and smokeless tobacco. Um, we have over 1,200 districts that are not considered tobacco free and largely need to have signage and policies that dictate that they'll be tobacco free, and that's where the primary cost related to this bill is focused. The estimated cost is about $230,000, primarily to support signage for all of our campus, a small cost that we think as it relates to keeping our kids healthy and safe from addiction and from other illnesses. And with that, we would respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Witnesses in support. Good afternoon, Lindsay Freitas with the American Lung Association in California here in strong support. Um, we feel that this bill is one of the number one ways to really ensure that youth do not pick up the tobacco. Um, schools that enforce 100% tobacco-free policies actually have lower smoking rates, and this directly correlates to lower health care costs down the road. So we strongly support this bill. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. Alicia Sanchez representing the California Medical Association in support. Gregory Kramer representing Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California in support. Anthony Wright with Health Access California in strong support. Megan Allred with the California Dental Association in support. Tim Gibbs, American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network in support. Kula Koenig, American Heart Association, American Stroke Association in support. Aaron Gable on behalf of First Five California in support. Jody Hicks on behalf of the California Academy of Family Physicians in support. Any additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition of the measure? Just follow a line here. I'm uh, finance. Uh, Matt Almey, Department of Finance. Um, we do not have a position on this bill. Uh, the bill could create a reimbursable state mandate of at least hundreds of thousands of dollars, Proposition 98 General Fund, by requiring schools to display signs stating tobacco use is prohibited at all school property entrances. Thank you. We do have a quorum. We're going to establish that now. Secretary, please call the roll. Laura? Here. Laura? Here. Bates? Here. Bates? Here. Bell? De Leon? Hill? Here. Hill here, Mendoza? Here. Mendoza here, Nielsen. Thank you. Any comments or questions from committee? Seeing none, we have a motion by Senator Mendoza. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due pass to the Senate floor. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Bates? Bell? De Leon? Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Nielsen. We're going to keep that open uh, to allow our absent members to add on. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any additional um, authors? I can go old school and just shut down the committee like we used to do with Migden. <laughs> it's very tempting. Back in the day.
Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Members, this is ABX 210, Assembly Bloom. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm presenting ABX 210, which is a bill that allows counties to place local tobacco tax measures on the ballot for a public vote. There are currently over 600 jurisdictions outside of the state of California that have the ability to raise their own tobacco taxes. In addition to the obvious health impacts from making cigarettes more expensive, there is a financial benefit. Uh, those 600 jurisdictions bring in over $430 million in revenue each year while reducing the smoking rate, especially amongst youth. There is no cost to the state. Any costs incurred by the state for the startup and administration of a local tax program must be reimbursed by the counties that are enacting the tax. Therefore, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Uh, witnesses in support. Tim Gibbs, the American Cancer Study Cancer Action Network. And, uh, you know, we always believe that local governments should have the most impactful policy tools when it comes to improving uh, health and reducing smoking. Um, should counties choose to increase their tobacco tax, the financial benefit would be significant. They would have the ability to reduce smoking and thus reduce health care costs while raising revenue to be spent however the Board of Supervisors and voters decide. So we believe that our 58 counties deserve the option to decide for themselves whether or not raising a tobacco tax makes sense. So we respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Additional witnesses and support. Lindsay Freitas, American Lung Association in California in support. <laughs> Kula Koenig, American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, in support. Megan Allred, California Dental Association, in support. Alicia Sanchez with the California Medical Association, in support. Michelle Cabrera with SEIU California, in support. Erin Gable on behalf of First Five California, in support. Jody Hicks with the California Academy of Family Physicians, in support. Gregory Kramer with Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California in support. Anthony Wright with Health Access California in support. Thank you. When this is an opposition, finance. Uh, we do not have a position on this bill. Um, if locals are authorized to levy additional tobacco taxes, tobacco consumption is expected to decrease because of the cost pressure. This will drive an unquantifiable decrease in general fund and special fund uh, state tobacco tax revenues. In addition, uh, additional costs to the uh, Board of Equalization uh, are expected to, uh, in terms of the need to redesign its current IT system, which is based on uniform statewide tax rate. While these costs will ultimately be recovered through local reimbursements, the initial startup costs may need to be funded within BOE's existing resources or through an additional general fund appropriation. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? There's a motion by uh, Senator Hill. Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is due pass to the Senate floor. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Bates? No. Bates, no. Bell? De Leon? Hill? Aye. Hill, I Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza, I Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. Broom. We're going to hold that roll up and allow absent members to vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're waiting for Mr. Nazarian.
Nazarian, welcome. Thank See, you're on uh, Armenian time. <laughs> it's actually Sacramento P PLC committee hearing time. PLC time. <laughs> uh, members, this is um, AB X211 by Senator Nazarian. Feel free to proceed, when, proceed whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senators. Um, AB 11 updates the cigarette and tobacco products licensing program by updating the licensing fee imposed on retail locations, distributors, and wholesalers. The bill establishes an annual fee as $265 uh, per retail location and $1,200 upon distributors and wholesalers. Since 2003, the Board of Equalization has administered the licensing program, which levies licensing fees on businesses that sell and distribute tobacco products in the state. Uh, since the launch of the program, the fee has not changed. It has remained as a one-time fee just a one-time fee per retail location. And uh, these fees go towards uh, not only the first five LA programs, but as well as the uh, uh, enforcement uh, that we help pay for the officers to ensure that uh, these products are not sold to uh, underage uh, minors. Uh, in 2003 to 2004, the licensing fee generated 18 million, which at the time was sufficient to maintain the program. However, over time, the cost to run the program has exceeded the revenue uh, generated from the fee. Board of Equalization estimated for uh, fiscal year 2013 to 14, the program cost 9.6 million and only generated 1.8 million for licensees from licensees. As a result, uh, the board requires payments from first five tobacco education prevention programs, the Breast Cancer Research Fund and General Fund, which receive cigarette and tobacco excise tax proceeds to cover the administration cost of the licensing program. It is evident that the lifetime retailer fee is not adequate to maintain a viable enforcement program. The additional revenues generated due to this bill will eliminate the need to divert tobacco excise taxes from their intended purposes. AB 11 is also good for businesses as it helps to stop violators from circumventing the law, competing with legitimate businesses. So with that, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Um, and I'm joined with by Autumn Ogden with the American Cancer Society Action Network. Witnesses in support. <clears throat> Autumn Ogden with uh, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network in proud support of this bill. Um, currently, the BOE diverts the excise tax revenue from critical programs such as the Breast Cancer Fund, the Tobacco Control Program, and the General Fund, uh, along with First Five California, to cover the costs of licensing tobacco um, by revising the Cigarette and Tobacco Products Licensing Act. To increase licensing fees, the BOE will be able to cover the cost of the program without having to take funding from important programs that are already suffering. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. Lindsay Freitas, American Lung Association, in strong support. Anthony Wright with Health Access California, in strong support. Gregory Kramer with Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California, in support. Kula Koenig, American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, in support.
Megan Allred with the California Dental Association in support. Alicia Sanchez with the California Medical Association in support. Jody Hicks with the California Academy of Family Physicians in support. Michelle Cabrera with SEIU California in support. Erin Gable on behalf of First Five California, First Five Los Angeles, and the Association of All 58 First Five County Commissions in support. Great, thank you. Any witnesses in opposition? Finance. Uh, we have a neutral position on this bill because it allows the licensing program to become self-sufficient. Um, replacing the current $100 one-time fee with an annual fee of $265 is estimated to generate an additional $9.5 million annually. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? Senator Nielsen. Good afternoon, Assemblyman Nazarian. Uh, this is not a facetious question. It's a very sincerely asked question. If ma marijuana is legalized in California, is it contemplated that uh, that it will also be licensed, the, the marijuana, as it will be tobacco too. Will there be legislation to include it under taxation and under licensing? I, I this bill does not cover that. No, no, I know it. it and it, 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 you wouldn't because that would be prospective. You don't know if sure. it is or not. Sure. But it, were it to be, is it contemplated and considered that it would make logical sense that of it course. should be? Of course, uh, but I think that would require a whole other conversation. Uh, given that we've already been through certain conversations and as legislation that was carried last year did not necessarily put uh, 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 marijuana use and enforcement under the purview of ABC. Uh, this is under the purview of ABC enforcement. So I think that would probably require us to have a future conversation on figuring out where exactly. Um, and, and on that note, I'll just use the privilege of saying no, I, 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 if, if this is to go forward, I hope that our input as, legisl as legislative body and, and state government is heard and there's enough uh, uh, of a tax put into place to ensure that there is adequate and appropriate enforcement um, of future marijuana legalization. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments or questions from committee? Seeing none, there's a motion by Senator Mendoza. Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is do pass to the Senate floor. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Bates? No. Bates, no. Bell? De Leon? Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Nielsen? No. Nielsen, no. Mr. Nazarian, we're going to keep the roll open to allow absent members to add on. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take this uh, second also just to. Um, give kudos to a, a Senator Liu, Senator McGuire, and Senator Bell, who also led in this uh, tremendous effort. So thank you, thank you for working collaboratively with our colleagues. So we're waiting for absent members. Thank you. Do you want to open for oh, we we will open uh, we'll open the roll for Senator Nielsen. Uh, first, we'll have item A B X two nine. Secretary, please call the roll of absent members. Motion is do pass to the Senate floor. Bates? Bell? Nielsen? Aye. No, aye. Go ahead and take Bell. Aye. Bell, aye. Nielsen? No. Nielsen, no. Thank you. We'll keep, we'll keep that item open. Um, next is ABX210 by Assemblymember Bloom. Secretary, please call the absent members. Motion is do pass to the Senate floor. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. De Leon? Nielsen? No. Nielsen, no. Four to two. Four to two. We'll keep that item open. The next item is ABX211. Secretary, please call the absent members. Motion is do pass to the Senate floor. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. De Leon? Four to two. Four to two. We'll keep that item open. We're waiting for pro tem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you,
Chair, how are you doing? I'm great, Mr. Pro Tem, how are you? We make this thing become a habit. <laughs> Let's make sure this doesn't become a habit, Mr. Pro Tem. Um, we're gonna open up um, the three items so we can allow our Pro Tem to add on. The first item is ABX29 by Senator Thurman. Secretary, please call the absent members. Bates, De Leon. Uh, aye. De Leon, aye. Five to two. Five to two, that item is out. Next item is ABX210 by Assemblyman Bloom. Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon. Aye. De Leon, aye. Five to two. Five to two, that item is out. Next and final item is ABX211 by Assemblyman Nazarian. Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon. Aye. De Leon, aye. Five to two, that item is out. Oh, we have a just point of clarification, ABX29. ABX29 is actually five to one, that item is out. That concludes our appropriations hearing, thank you.